the major part of it is case management. And so therefore, the figures I have here, as we heard from the regional director, are quite different. In fact, they are different in the sense that all the figures I have here are people who are presenting as sick people to the hospital. All the figures here are people who come in sick, who are tried or evaluated, and we think that they fit into the case protocol. And therefore, we have to select them for um, holding for a period before they are tested for us to confirm whether they are positive or negative. So far, we have sampled 179 patients. And for the 179 patients, we have received um, tests, reports for 162 to date. As I speak, there are about there are 17 patients currently being held at our holding area, awaiting results from the KCCR. We have so far had three patients who have tested positive. Three patients who have tested positive. And the number of patients currently who are at our highly infectious isolation unit are two. But we had three patients before the Easter weekend. But one passed away during the holiday. And in terms of our total mortality, for the COVID-19 patients that has come to Kofanachi, there are three. We've lost three patients so far. So that's the figures um, that I intended to give to you. And let me say that for some of the patients that we have received and have cared for, some of whom have been discharged, some of them were actually tested at other facilities and referred to us because of their conditions for further care at Confederate Hospital. So this is the briefing as far as the figures are concerned. I just want to read some of the issues that we have been dealing with. In terms of the protocols for the do's and don'ts, I always want to emphasize anytime I have an opportunity for you, the media, to assist us. The pictures we have seen over the weekend are not pleasing at all. I'm sure a lot of them, you may have also seen it. And that was also emphasized by the regional director. In terms of the gathering of mass of people uh, chasing for food and what have you, we have had discussions as leadership of the regional team. And I know that this morning some consultation is going on for us to look at new models of how to issue out food assistance to the less privileged. The other thing is to do with our recognition in terms of the general lockdown procedures. Please assist us, especially you in the media fraternity. When I say you should assist us, you should assist us in the area of further educating the public about the real essence of really staying at home. If we do not have any core or essential service out there, please stay in your house. Stay in your house. I have come across some kind of unpleasant exchanges with security men, which for me are uncalled for. We are giving the security ahead of time. I will urge the media to assist us in a more positive direction rather than the interviews with people who have all kinds of uh, what I will describe as flimsy excuses to be out there in the streets. Some of them even make a mockery of the directive by the president. And I think some people just come out there as recalcitrants who want to challenge the, the system or the directive. I think the media has a duty. That is what we want to achieve. 
So please assist us to make sure that we'll be able to plateau and for the leadership of the country to begin to actually lose the system to assist all of us. Some of the issues that has come up, which I want to emphasize here for your assistance, is to do with some men of God also trooping to our studios to preach to the public in a very defiant and very negative manner. I think this does not help the cause of Ghana at all. These are certainly deliveries or preachings that frustrate the efforts of His Excellency the President and the efforts that all of us are making to make sure that we contain this pandemic. Without any scientific basis, we have all kinds of preachers who are making claims of denial of the disease existence. And in fact, some of them are actually uh, begging the question. And we expect that the media will also show some strong responsibility in this light and make sure that we manage these kind of distractions because they don't help the public. They don't help us as a, a country. Lastly, it's to do with our patient confidentiality issues. This thing has been hammered over and over again. For us in conformity, as I've said, we are giving the numbers. We're trying to protect everybody who comes in. And in fact, especially for you, the media, you must assist us in this area. Because the biggest challenge which is emerging in dealing with this problem is about stigmatization. And whether or not individuals, facilities such as homes or community will be stigmatized depends on the kind of education we will give to the public and the way we handle some of the information that we get. Because of stigma, people are also in denial. When they are sick, they are failing to report. And when they are even reporting, they are not giving you the right medical history for you to be able to use all the relevant information for diagnosis. So please, these things are very, very critical. Help all of us to make sure that we try our, I mean, and deal very positively with the stigma issue as far as COVID-19 is concerned. I think I want to thank you for your attention. Thank you.